the human brain is more complex than any other known structure in the universe. This spines a mass of fat and protein comprising two of writing type cells, namely glia and urine, containing billions of each. Together, this complex nature of the brain cells gives rise to every aspect of our shared humanity. That is, we cannot breathe, love, play, or even remember things without the brain. At the University of Cambridge, at the Department of Clinical Neurosciences, we carry out research to understand how things go wrong in the brain, as well as improve the care of critically ill patients after they've had serious brain injury. A traumatic brain injury is an injury to the brain caused by an external force, causing damage to the brain's function. Causes of TBI include force, road traffic accidents, violence. When we carry out chemistry experiments at times, we face a challenge, and that is we cannot see the molecules. For instance, when we react two substances together, we would get a product. However, we need a way to be sure that our product is what we think it is. This is because with our naked eyes, we cannot see the molecule structure. This is where spectroscopy comes in. Spectroscopy is the study of the interaction of light and matter. There is a lot of forms of spectroscopy that we can use to collect the information of what a product might be. In our department, nuclear magnetic resonance and infrared are the spectroscopy techniques that we use to also understand the brain's chemistry of TBI patients. So traumatic brain injury has been identified as a major cause of death and disability in people of all ages, particularly in young adults. After the initial trauma, a delayed secondary injury can occur in about 40% of patients, and this generally occurs within the hours and days that follow, and occurs when the patient, while the patient is in the intensive care unit. There is evidence that has shown that um, it, like close monitoring of these, the secondary brain injury can significantly improve patient outcome. Uh, me and my colleagues here at the Department of Clinical Neurosciences are working towards developing a sensor that will allow the continuous online and close to real time monitoring of the brain chemistry of patients suffering from traumatic brain injury um, so that hopefully uh, patients will have far better outcomes. Rescue Bracer project is about increasing our understanding of brain injury in motorsport and trying to improve the treatment and guidance for drivers who've had such an injury, getting drivers back to racing safely and as soon as possible. One of the main aims of the Rescue Racer programme was to find a diagnostic tool for concussion um, and there are two tools that really might fall into that remit. The first one is the, the 3D headset, iPass. That currently takes eight minutes. And the other option is taking um, some kind of body fluid sample. So we may even be able to tell just from a spit sample. In 2018, I had the Sid Watkins Scholarship, which is a joint medicine and engineering scholarship. And that allowed me to understand the interface between the FIA, um, medicine, motorsport, and engineering. And the FIA have now fully supported and funded this project. The management of this condition for everybody in terms of, of road traffic accidents and other causes of head injury. So some of the findings I'm sure will also apply to road traffic accidents on the public road and hopefully we'll be able to improve the treatment diagnosis uh, for, the, for these people too. Hi, my name is Monica. I'm uh, here at the University of Cambridge in the Clinical Neurosciences Department. So I'm studying uh, the interplay between metabolism and inflammation uh, in traumatic brain injury patients and in cell cultures. I have always been fascinated by the functioning of the brain and also my sister is a neuropsychologist so we have been talking about it plenty of time weekends, holidays, all the time so when I saw a job position that were joining my knowledge in chemistry with this area, I didn't think it twice One of the things that I love the most about my job is the variety of things that I do I use very different techniques 
Sometimes I just need to do two steps to put the sample into the machine. Sometimes I need 30. Sometimes I can work with minimal light. Sometimes I need to use a magnet. It's crazy. Also, I have my days office in which I analyze the data I, I got, I look for results, and I write articles and documents. And then I also love to be surrounded with people that has many different backgrounds than mine, so I can learn from them. I, I am surrounded by doctors, nurses, engineers, biologists, and it is love. So I'm from a small town in regional Australia and I never thought that Cambridge would be something for me back then. I just thought I'm a bit interested in chemistry and that I might want to do something sciencey at university. Um, but uh, in order to save up to go to university, uh, I'd had to take a year to work. So I joined the Australian Army actually and deferred the degree that I got into straight away. My favourite subjects in school uh, were definitely chemistry and also modern history, but I thought there might be more of a careers in science, uh, so I applied to do just a general science undergraduate degree, and um, from there, from doing extra research summer projects and trying to get a hands-on experience in research, I found that it was something that I really enjoyed, and neuroscience just seems like the subject where it's the final barriers, there's so much things about the mind that we don't understand yet, but there's still loads to discover, so that's why I really enjoy researching neuroscience. Uh, so some of the harder parts about working in a lab would be uh, when sometimes your experiments don't work, or sometimes the machines aren't working so well, and uh, yeah, you might have to run the experiments a few times in order to get the results that you need, and maybe a lot of time goes into that, so you have to really build up some resilience in order to um, sort of get through when things don't always work out. But yeah, it's a really good lesson to learn in general. One of my favourite things about studying at Cambridge and living in Cambridge is the incredible sort of sights and things you would see when you would wander around this sort of old part of town. Uh, the architecture's amazing, the people are amazing. The opportunity to just pop into a little coffee shop, pop into a little cafe, sit with friends, study, that sort of thing. It all just lends itself 